quick video here on how to properly maintain your bike chain um, I like to completely remove the chain clean it put it back on and lube it um, the little brush things work fine but um, they wear out they break and this is sort of the tried and true method uh, my bikes a 3 by 10 mountain bike um, and this is a SRAM chain be aware that on the 10 speed chain SRAM went to these power lock master links so the power lock master links aren't really designed to be removed by hand like the gold colored power link master links there's some specialty tools for doing this but I'll show how to do it with just common tools in the garage if you have a Shimano chain it's a little different uh, they have a connecting pin and you may need a chain tool for that uh, you can look the procedure up on how to do that um, that's pretty much why I like SRAM chains okay so you want to start out by uh, putting your chain on your smallest chain ring and smallest cog to get maximum slack in the chain makes it a little easier to work on and uh, next step get your master links set up in the top dead center position so it's easy to get to okay so in order to be able to get at the power lock uh, a little more easily I'm going to use a twisty tie um, just make a loop of chain and loop your twisty tie through a couple links of chain below the power lock and tie it off real good so instead of buying a tool that's going to be useless in a few years uh, I'm going to show how to do this with just a set of channel locks so the key is you get uh, one set of teeth on one side of the chain and the other set on the other side and it's kind of diagonal and just pinch it so it'll pop right apart easy peasy you can also use pliers um, I've even used uh, like needle nose pliers before but um, you can carry some twisty ties and a little small wrench on the trail this works great on the trail if you need to bust it apart heads up with this little trick and make sure you're holding both sides of the chain when you remove the twisty otherwise you could get some pretty serious chain whip I like to use a little small bowl like this um, and a 50-50 mix of um, citrus degreaser and water. Um, I think this stuff here is simple green, uh, but any, any citrus degreaser will do. And uh, Mix it up and uh, get the chain in there and give it a good rub around and, and let it soak for some hours. So yeah, after it's soaked for a while, you can uh, you can use a brush or something to get the extra excess off any places. But generally speaking, um, if you let it soak long enough, you, you really don't need to brush it all that much. Um, I just get the get the hose out and uh, spray it down real good. And so when you're done rinsing it off, you want to put it on a towel or something, wipe it off pretty good, 
and then sort of uh, spread it out around on the tent on the towel and uh, I like to let it sit out for a while and air dry evaporate any residual water that's um, in the nooks and crannies uh, but basically when you're done I mean you're you're effectively you're looking at a, a new chain uh, except for the wear and tear you've got So be aware that SRAM recommends to uh, replace your power locks and not reuse them. Um, I say horse hockey, I've been able to reuse them several times uh, without any issue. Um, but if they start to get loose, you can remove them by hand or something like that. It might be a good idea to replace them at that time. It's up to you. So once the chain's good and dry, it's time to thread it back on. Of course, you want to make sure you thread it on correctly and then make sure your two end pieces are facing towards the bottom of the bike so uh, you're working on it in the same area as before so you can get to that power link. When putting the chain back on, you don't really need the twisty tie trick. Um, it's much easier to, to put it on and take it off, but uh, went ahead and did it here anyway just to, just to illustrate the process. Once you get it on, you get it back into a more normal um, gear setting and give it a give it a final wipe off uh, if you have any residual moisture there. So for lubing, I like to be, I like to use TriFlow. Um, some kind of penetrating lube though is good as a, as a first layer um, rather than just starting with wax because this way the lube penetrates deep into uh, all the tiny little joints and whatnot. I like to put down a little shop rag or something to catch the uh, excess drip and spray. Right, when you're done with the penetrating lube, just give it a little wipe, wipe off the excess. So after your penetrating lube, you need to use some kind of a dry or semi-dry. I, I use this uh, White Lightning semi-dry, ep epic ride, they call it, um, as, a, as a top coat. Basically the same process, except this just sort of drips out, set of sprays out. Just uh, drizzle it on real good and uh, when you're done just wipe off that excess. So as far as how often do you clean the chain? I mean, if your bike's tuned real good, good and quiet, you'll, you'll actually be able to hear the chain when it starts making little squeaks. That'd be a good time to clean it. Or if you live in a wet area where it's real muddy, of course, if it gets mud and dirt caked onto your chain, you, you need to clean that off. That's how it's done.